greetings to all of you in the master's name of my Savior Jesus. Good to be here. I know <coughs> all of you must be tired. I'm tired. I was tired after the journey. But I'm, I hope none of you are sleepy because that's something which we don't like when we are having a serious discussion. I believe that this is a leadership uh, training camp where you have already attended many camps before and you have listened to God's word. So today being the first day, I'm going to introduce you to the topic of leadership. In the Bible, it's a ser servant leadership, which has been the model that Jesus has shown. And it's amazing that even the business schools in the country and abroad have added that also as a part of their leadership training. There are different models of leaders, autocratic leaders, leaders who do it, don't care, you do what you want, I do what I want, that kind of leaders which are very benevolent. The leaders who are family kind of focusing, encouraging. But servant leadership is very unique. And that's been the way that God has showed us in Jesus. So as we go through the next three days, <clears throat> I want all of you to understand why are you living? And what is the purpose of your life? Are leaders born or bo leaders created? Do you have that calling to be a leader or is it only for some people? So these are questions I want you to think as we discuss in the next few days on leadership. The first day being today, I would be talking on call to leadership and then commitments of leadership cost of leadership, things like that. Some people say, I'm not a leader, I'm only a follower. How do you make out whether you are a leader or not? Is If you have one follower, then you already become a leader. And most of us in medical practice, doctors on the whole are supposed to be meant as leaders because you lead a team. You have nurses with you, you have others with you. As a father, you lead a family. And as a team, in many of your games, you have been playing leadership role. So somewhere or other, there are few characters in your life which are of leadership. And the whole pack will depend on how the leader is. If you have a leader who is very vibrant, energetic, you will have a pack which is very vibrant and energetic. But if the leader is actually a very docile, the whole pack will be a very docile team. So the whole thing will depend on who the leader is. I always tell you, never drive behind a parked vehicle. Some people drive behind a parked vehicle. The leader in front of you is parked, he's stationed. He doesn't know that he's not progressing in life. He hasn't grown physically, mentally, spiritually for the last five years. And the followers are all trying to drive behind him, showing action and horn and everything. But you are driving behind a parked vehicle. Never ever do that. That means in every day of your life there has to be a growth. If there is no growth and if there is no progress, you are actually reversing or backsliding. There is nothing called stagnancy. If there is no growth or there is no progress, that means you are actually backsliding. So I want you to check in your life the last few years and see how you have been growing every day in your life. See, in pediatric medicine department, there's something called road to health chart, where a baby is supposed to do certain things at three months, six months, one year, like that. So at one year, the baby is supposed to just stand up and maybe a little few steps. So the parents will be always watching and few uh, words. The parents are very excited. And when they say, Papa, Mama, Big excitement. My baby has started speaking, walking, taking the first steps. Ten years down the line, if the baby says only Papa, Mama, and still staggers around, that excitement being off. I hope you got my point. So you need to be growing every day of your life. If you are same as what you were last year, then probably you are equivalent to dead. If you are not growing physically, mentally, spiritually every day of your life, 
that means you are reversing or degenerating or retrograde. So I want these four or five days in this camp that whether you are a leader by birth or not, doesn't matter. Whether you have any leadership quality or not, doesn't matter. If you surrender your life into God's hand, you will be walking out of this session as a leader. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to take leadership position? Because that means responsibility. Leadership. Some people don't want leadership because they don't want responsibility. Leadership means you need to have responsibility. You have to take responsibility. So if you're not interested in taking responsibility, you can never be a leader. So we want you to, each one of you to take a decision and start thinking. Am I a leader? Who are my followers? How am I? And if you set, there are some people in the school and college who are trendsetters, who set the trend every time. They do something, everybody follows. So they are the leaders who trendset in their life. So now we are going to look spiritually, what does following Christ mean? Who is a true leader as a Christian, as a believer? As I mentioned in the beginning itself, this is a servant leadership. So a true leader as a believer is a disciple, is a disciple. And what is the meaning of a disciple? Very simple, it means scholar, somebody who is willing to learn every day. Somebody is willing to learn every day. The biggest thing about a child is that child is excited to learn. Very excited. I can see that our little girl at the back, she's also intensely uh, listening more than any of you, trying to learn every word that I'm speaking. Because their curiosity and learning is very high. Their dreams are very high. But as you become older and older, 50, 60, you stop dreaming, you stop learning, you stop growing, you start degenerating. So I don't want any of you to stagnate in your spiritual life, in your intellectual life, in your emotional life. I want all of you to grow and become leaders. So we'll go through verses. I would appreciate if you have a pen and a book, today being the first day, because you're going to forget anyway everything I say. So unless and until you carry a pen and a book, uh, it will not be a serious study. I am happy for those who brought it and those who haven't, uh, please bring it for all the sessions so that these are serious studies and uh, you need to go back and reflect. We are not here to pass time. So if we are passing time, uh, it's going to be a waste of time for me and also for you. So we are going to spend some time. Yes, I'm glad. So let's turn to the word of God. Matthew chapter 4. Verse 19, Matthew chapter 4, do you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, get your Bibles ready, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, somebody who has got to open the Bible can read loud, I would appreciate people to read from different sides, so that I want all of you to be involved, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, Jesus called out, yes, Come along with me and I will show you how to fish for souls of men. Follow me. Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Come along with me and I will show you how to fish men. He is calling simple fisher folk, fishermen. God's choice of leadership was not from the highest category, you know. We have entrance coaching centers which says you can get into medicine, engineering, but we take only students above 60%. Actually, you don't need to go for entrance coaching. Children above 60% are going to get somewhere or other. You take people below 20% and say, okay, entrance coaching, come and join. If your mark is less than 20%, we will make sure that you get into engineering or medicine or some professional course. That's important. You get what I'm saying? So Jesus is taking up people like simple folk, like a fisherman, trying to transform him into a leadership quality where it's beyond your imagination. So he said to Peter, what did he say? Follow me. So a leader or a teacher has to learn first to learn. A leader has first learned to follow. Like for example, as a surgeon, we were put five years in residency 
where we followed our professor, exactly how he operated, how he cut the skin, how he took the kidney out, how he took the gallbladder out, how he operated the thyroid. You watch and see and follow him. And if you say, I don't want to go into the theatre, I don't want to see operation, but I want to be a surgeon, you can never be a surgeon. I don't want to drive, but I, I don't want to learn driving, but I want, don't want to get into a car, no. I want to learn swimming, but I can't jump into water, I'm afraid of water, you can never, never learn swimming. So if you have to be a leader, you have to start following. The best person you can follow in your life, who will never fail you, who is a perfect model, whom you can learn everything from, is Jesus. So if you want to be the best leader in the world, follow Jesus. He said, Peter, you follow me, I will make you fishers of men. What was Peter doing at that point? If you look at once verse before, you find that Peter was uh, watching a TV or playing with his mobile phone, was it? Right? What, is it? what was he doing? He was busy doing his work. So always leaders are always very busy people. God does not want lazy people. Because lazy people will be born lazy, living lazy, dying lazy. Laziness is a sickness. I would call it as a number one sin. Forgive me if I've got excess. It kills you. Because if God says count your days, count your seconds, unless and until you learn to count every opportunity, every second in your life, your life is meaningless. Your life has no replay button. If you don't take anything seriously, you are not serious. Your life is not serious. At the end of the day, you are a big waste. So don't waste your time and don't become a waste. You waste your time, you become a waste. So you have to make sure that your days are very serious. So God takes us people who are busy. If you look at busy people, they have 100 things side by side. Like I am a neurosurgeon. I pastor a church. I teach in neurosurgery training and I take retreats all over the world and I travel extensively and still I find time for my family, I time for my, find time for my exercise, I time, find time for myself and still I have excess time. Amen? You don't have time, right? I have lots of time for you. Time you have to find, you can't make time. You have to find time. You cannot create time. You have to find time. So he said, follow me to a busy man who was busy with his work. He was fishing. And how did he follow? The next sentence. Next sentence. How did he follow? What was his response? Verse 20. What was his response? They immediately left, they immediately left their nets, nets and, followed and followed him. It sounds very simple. Oh, after all he left his net, not his BMW car. Now there's a famous book called The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. Yes. Has anybody read that? Please read books, sir. If you want your brain to develop, read all kinds of books. I read all kinds of books, sir. The Monk Who Sold a Ferrari. So, if you say Peter left his BMW and went after Jesus. Wow! Man, he left his BMW and went after Jesus. He said, he left his net and went after Jesus. What do you mean by that net? His livelihood, his occupation, what he was. He was a fisherman basically. He was defined by that net. He lived with that net. He struggled with that net. He made money out of that net. Everything was that net. He didn't have anything else other than that net. It's like for a cameraman to throw his camera and go. For a surgeon to close his operation theatre and come like this. That is following. I went for a big meeting in a North India for three days. And the man came up and said, water tanks. And this happened to be a guy from Kerala. So he said, I'm so happy that this doctor has come from Kerala. Closing his neurosurgery centre for four days. <laughs> to preach the gospel. We don't even close our petticada fun day for to preach the gospel. You know what petticada is? It's a small pan dukkha, small shops. If I stay one day in my, my clinic, it means a big thing for me. You don't understand. It's like 
the ordinary man staying three months in his workshop. One day is enough for me. So if I say I'm going to close that for Jesus, I really mean business. I'm not here to fool around. And I mean business with every one of you. If you don't mean business, I don't care the large number. I care only for one person who is serious. If you are willing to leave everything that you have and follow Christ, you are going to be an atom bomb. You are going to be a supernatural person. You are going to be something beyond your imagination. You must be born as an ordinary man, but God is going to make you an extraordinary man. When you decide to follow Jesus, the first chapter of your life, you are going to write today. You are following your friend, finished. You will be like him. There were guys who were following Michael Jackson. You should have seen their walk and all, but like Michael Jackson. <laughs> there are guys who follow somebody else. Their hairstyle and they'll do like this and that, just like the other fellow is doing. There are fellow fellows who follow Mohanlal and they walk like that. They follow different people, they do different things. Some people are crazy about cricket, they do keep doing like this. You have to be careful whom you follow because unknowingly you will start doing what he does. Hello? I don't know whether you've been following Jesus Christ. I believe all of you are born again. I believe you have attended classes before. I know that this is not your first camp, but this camp is a serious camp. This is a leadership training camp. It's not like what you have attended ever before. So here is Peter. Gandhiji's name will be forgotten after 10 years. Obama's name will be forgotten after 5 years. But Peter will be named even the last child that is going to be born in the world before the world ends. His name will never be forgotten because he lived for the king of kings. Amen? Free amen. You can say amen. Nothing is going to happen. No charges. Amen? amen. Hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah is not also charged. I love to say hallelujah. Because in, 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 in heaven, there's no neurosurgery. I'll be jobless. All I'll be doing, hallelujah. There's no brain tumor there. So here is Jesus calling his disciple who was busy with his work and saying, Hey Peter, follow me. If I go outside to Madras and say, Hey Peter, follow me. That No, Peter is going to follow me. <laughs> See, that word of Christ had power. That word of Christ had motivation. I can tell you the words I speak. I don't speak from my mouth just like that. It has to be powered by the Holy Spirit. If you want to be a leader in the kingdom of God, you need to have the power of the Holy Spirit. How did the whole creation come? When, this, when the energy of the Spirit of God hovering over the waters met with the Word of God and said, let there be light. When these two things came together, creation happened. Even today, new things will be created in your life when the Word of God and the Spirit of God comes together. That's the biggest combination you can ever have. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of the people believe only in the Word of God. And they say, Word of Word, Word. Very good. I believe in the Word. But let me tell you, Satan was the biggest theologian. He knew everything that was in the Word. He quoted Word. Some people believe only in the spiritual experiences and the manifestations and things like that. They don't believe in the study of the word of God. No. It has to be equal. It has to be same one is to one combination. The word and the spirit working together. Follow me and you follow. How many of you are ready to have a life which is exciting, which is supernatural, which is beyond your imagination? See a wonderful character, a great man of God came to pick me up this morning at the railway station. I don't know whether you know him. I want to introduce his name. Uh, his name is <laughs> Dan. And I told him as we were traveling in the train, in the suburban train, he kept asking me, how many miracles, what all have you seen? I said, I cannot tell you everything. You have to look at the YouTube and see. My testimony itself is very big. All I can tell you is few things. Because if you are working with the, walking with the supernatural God, if you are walking with the Heavenly Father, every day of your life is a miracle. Every day there will be something exciting. If you walk with the devil, same thing will happen. <laughs> Either you are walking with 
God or you are walking with devil. You can decide whom you are walking with. Either you are filled with the Holy Spirit or you are filled with the evil spirit. You can decide what you have. And it will be very clearly evident by the action you do. Follow me and he left and followed immediately. So my first challenge on the inaugural day or the first keynote address. How many of you are ready for this call of Jesus? Follow me. I will make you fishers of them. Can you say an amen to that? Amen. Real amen from the bottom of your heart. Amen. I really mean that. I am going to follow Jesus. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know who said this? St. Paul said that. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am living for myself, building many hospitals, many houses, buying a lot of cars, iPhones, iPads, all other kinds of things. When I die, I'm the biggest loser. Because I'm going to lose everything I made. So for me to live is myself and to die is a loser. If I live for Christ and make everything there, then for me to die is gain. Did you understand the meaning of the verse? When you die, if it's gain, your assets have to be where? In heaven! If you don't have any asset in heaven and you are a beggar there, why, not, why, not, why go there? Do you want to be a beggar in heaven? When Peter is going to come into heaven, there is going to be a big acclamation. Warm welcome. Hey, Peter is coming. John is coming. Here, Kohur is coming. And Daniel is also coming. You should have a warm welcome in the kingdom of God. You should have so much of asset there that you are not going to be a beggar there, but you are going to be a great personality in heaven. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't go to heaven and study in a special IAS coaching and get a rank and then promote yourself and have more crowns and have glory there. No. What you do here will depend on what you are going to have there. There is no special class done there. You understand? You get what I mean? So all what you are going to do from now on is going to depend and going to make your next life. When I accepted Christ, I was only five years old. When I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I was less than eight years old. When I started preaching the word, I was not even ten years old. I don't want to shock you. But when I took the Bible and went to the town in the market area with my friends and I was preaching, a big crowd will come to see the small boy standing there and talking. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because this is the greatest thing that you can ever share. I want all of you to kick your shame off, your laziness off, your inhibitions off and get into missions immediately and start becoming on fire for the kingdom of God. So Peter was called and said, follow me and he decided to follow Christ. Shall we go? Are you ready to have a deeper study or are you sleepy? You're ready. Okay. Then we'll go. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Quickly we'll study some verses. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Isaiah 6 8. <coughs> Get to read quickly, otherwise usually my class goes up to three hours. So also, please read quickly. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Yes. Whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Here send am me. I. Send, send me. me. Why didn't God say, Isaiah, you go. Why didn't he say? He said, Whom shall I send? Who will go? It was no name. Why? Because you could put your name. What is your name, brother? Jacob. Jacob. So, he didn't say, Jacob, go. He said, whom shall I send? Now, you can put your name, Jacob, and say, I will go. Jacob, where are you from? South Sudan. Sudan. Wow. So, the whole of Sudan is going to be evangelized by one apostle called Jacob. Can you imagine the power of the Holy Spirit and the word going to work? When he accepts this word, like Isaiah, says, here am I. Isaiah was ready to say, here am I, I will go. Whom shall I send? It's an open invitation. Angels didn't come down and say, George Kaur, why are you not saying anything for the kingdom of God? Hey man, speak something. 
say a testimony, sing a song, nothing like that. Hello? Do you get me? Some people are waiting to have some supernatural thing to come. Somebody asked me, if God was so powerful, why didn't he make stars and write, God is alive? Everybody could say, ah, God is alive. <laughs> God is alive. Or write it on every cell or every stone. Jesus is the Savior. Wow, Jesus is the Savior. I really believe that Jesus is the Savior. You think my God is a fool? To make you believe by some supernatural sign? He has already displayed His glory on the earth by the creation. He has talked to you in many different ways. You are waiting for some magic show? No. He is calling you this evening to say, come on. Whom shall I send? Who will go? Who is going to be the leader for me? He is just looking for few of you, not all of you. I know when I take class, everyone doesn't pass. Only few pass. I know when I take a lesson, many don't listen, but only few listen. I want you to be the one who listens very carefully. Whom shall I send? Who will go for me? Did anyone get any check in the last month from Infosys company? No. Anybody? Infosys? No. Because you never worked in Infosys, right? Did anyone get from Tata? Tata Mobile? Because you didn't work here. See, you don't work for the kingdom of God, but you want check to come every month. God give me that. Let me pass my examination. Give me nice. How dare you ask things to God when you have not done anything for Him? You want only wages and not to work? Are you begging? We don't want any beggars in the kingdom of God. We want people who are willing to work. Don't be shameless to ask God. He is a good God. He will give it to you. Never mind. So let's go and try it again. Last exam you passed me. Give me some more help and make me pass. Hello? Am I being too harsh on the very first day? No, I'm being very gentle, right? I want you to get the point immediately. No lazing around, no fooling around. You are listening to somebody who's been serious with life. Because nobody will allow their skull to be opened unless that man is very serious. Will you allow a drunkard to open his skull? Will you allow a drunkard to come and open your skull? No, if you will allow a neurosurgeon that means you know that he's a dedicated man. He's a committed man. He's not a fool. He means business with his life. I mean business with the kingdom of God. I mean business with every one of you tonight. I'm not here to just say something and please you know. I want you to understand you are in the kingdom of God. You are already born again. You are a child of God. God is calling you for something very unique. He's going to appoint you, anoint you, and give you a special gift. Make you powerful. It is not the ability what he looks for. It is the availability. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Tomorrow morning I go with the paint. And take a paintbrush and paint this place around. And the evening I go to Philip and Delcy and say, give me money. Will they give me money? No. Why? Because they didn't ask me to paint, right? So don't start doing things in the kingdom of God without God asking you. So when you listen to God's voice, you must very carefully decide whether it is God's will. I know I am 100% sure, even though Calvin called me, that I am here by God's will. Because God is going to raise up one Paul, one Peter and one Isaiah among you. You can decide who is going to be that one. You can decide whether you want Sudan to be evangelized by the power of the Holy Ghost. And you are going to be the one God is going to anoint you. Amen? Amen. Since I don't have much time this morning, this morning, evening, night session, let me quickly rush through some more things I want to share with you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 24 to 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 24 to 27. Quickly, please write with your pen and your notebook and never forget because writing is very crucial. Your brain works differently. Hearing is one area, seeing is another area, writing is another area. When you do all these three things together, your memory circuit is made good. So that means you can learn better. So make sure that you read, write and listen simultaneously. Have you got 1 Corinthians? 
Chapter 1, verse 24. Yes, please. Once you get it, quickly read. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks. But those who are called both Jews and Greeks. Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Whether you are a Malayali or a Tamilian or a Kannadiga or from Africa, it doesn't matter. Whether you are a Greek or a Jew, it doesn't matter. Who you are, it doesn't matter. I don't care for your color. I don't care for your caste. I don't care where you come from. Did you hear what we read just now? Whether you are a Jew or a Greek, what does it doesn't matter? What does, what does matter? What does what does matter? What does it matter? Christ, the power of God. It's the Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Yes, it is Christ that is going to work in you. The beautiful verse that has been powering me last one whole year. Every year I have certain verses which powers me. Is from First Colossians chapter one, verse 26, 27, 28, of which. The greatest that sentence that has really touched me in the last whole year is that the mystery of Christ, the hope of glory, is in me. The resurrected Godhead, the Son of Man, Christ, the hope of glory, is in me. Your homework, Colossians chapter 1, 26 onwards. Please go and study and we'll discuss on that tomorrow. The mystery of Christ in you. The hope of glory. So it is Christ that is going to make you who different. You are leader. Transform you to things which you can never do. Which you are unable to do. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 21, 22, 20, 23, 24. First Corinthians 7, 21 onwards. Are yeah. you called by a slave? Do not be concerned about it. Yeah. But if you can be made free, rather use it. Yes. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave yes. is the Lord's freed man. Yes. Likewise, he who is called while free is Christ's slave. You are brought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he is called. Wherever you are called, you remain like that. Means don't try to become a neurosurgeon. No. He needs philosophical fellows. I met a philosopher today. Yes. He needs philosophers. He needs engineers. He needs all kinds of people. So remain where you are. What you are created for. The unique purpose for your creator. There's no rocks machine in the kingdom of God. Don't try to ape me. Be unique. Be different. Be who you are. Because God has created you very specially and very uniquely. So don't try to do what somebody else is doing, but understand what God has called you and remain in the rank and serve. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. These Bible verses before sleeping, you must read again as the meditation tonight. All classes taken on the last sessions are to be gone back and studied in the night. And you get into your biggest memory circuit and remain there forever. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us. Each person is called according to a special purpose. There is no jobless person in the kingdom of God. I have no role in the church. I have no role in, no role in, uh, in the student ministry. I have no role in EU. I have a role in everything. Wherever God places you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Last weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was in the CSI Idiki District Convention. Now I am in the EU meeting. Ten years, I had gone and preached in the Catholic Retreat Center. Five years, I was with the Jacobite Church. I have gone among the Hindus. I have no problem where I go. Where God calls me, I go. Whether it be Campus Crusade, whether it be EMFI, doesn't matter. There is no difference. Where God has called you, you are called with a unique purpose. You are called with a unique purpose. So I started as an evangelist. Later I became a missionary. Now I become a pastor. Very soon I am turning myself into an apostle. Apostle means planting churches. You know the five, five main things in, in, the, in the kingdom of God? This is apostle. Okay? This is... What is this? Prophet. Very good. This one? 
evangelist this one pastor this one teacher five five fold ministry in the church apostle prophet who points things at you evangelist who is shining all the time on top the biggest guy everybody sees him the pastor who is in between and the teacher who helps the pastor what is this apostle he is the one who can support all these four he is the one who is gone through all these four he is the one who has learned everything through these things so you have to start as a teacher you have to be a apostle you come to the level of apostle you need to have prophecy you need to be an evangelist every role in the christian life is meant for you praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah nowadays people ask why should i get married this question was not there when we were young i was faced with this question i also have a couple of friends in trishul i don't know whether you know which is a society called dings double income no kids both are doctors but no children if you ask them why you don't have children they get angry don't ask such silly questions see god made god ordained marriage god ordained the responsibility to be a father and a mother and to have children now this is all getting diluted and there is the latest sentence which is the d d d latest it's called living together don't even have any commitment have just some fun maybe an overnight stand or maybe a month stand or two months stand or a year stand and then leave the stand and go off these are not part of the kingdom of god these are not the eternal principles of god a neurosurgery friend of mine commented today in the facebook everything has got modernized why not the word of god sun was not modernized sun is still the same he is giving the heat he has not started giving ice now chill man cool it so from tomorrow onwards sun start giving ice to chill everybody hello you get me sun did not become modernized it's still hot man it's pretty hot here right now you can feel the heat of it it's not easy you come for a real hot session you need to be committed what do you mean business with the kingdom of god you are not come to fool around in this leadership training camp camp you come with a serious business you need to decide what you're doing with your life don't play around your with your life because your life has no replay button only a play button so tonight you will never get it back let this session be a very important session where you take major decisions in your life and say lord i am willing to follow you the way you want let me know the purpose for which i am created when god calls somebody he calls you with the purpose when god calls paul saul he said i will make you stand in front of the kings and act 9 he called him and act 26 he stands in front of king agrippa so god knew exactly what god was going to do in saint paul's life before even he called the last day of your life god knows so don't worry about it hello the expiry date of your life he knows very well so you don't need to worry about it but what you need to do is live your life very carefully you may think why is a neurosurgeon coming here to spend time with a group like this how many of you heard my testimony i want to see how many of you heard my testimony only two of you that's a disaster because i have more than 2500 subscribers in youtube channel and i thought most of you who here would have googled and found out who the speaker is and would have already seen my testimony in that you are not high tech i think because when i went to the idiki district convention and i asked one brother uh, clint to take the videos he said yeah yeah i'll take your videos and already googled and started seeing your videos so i'm excited to take some there are people who google you even before you land i'm thankful to you who have in googled so that i have an opportunity to share my testimony with you you are ready for it yes when i was born i was not born like you all were i was born with a huge head with water inside which is called hydrocephalus hydro means water cephalus means head water was taken out of my head four times in cmc velo where i did my neurosurgery 
that's how I learned Tamil because I lived in Tamil Nadu. That's why I love Dosha and Vidli so much. The first neurosurgeon of the country, Dr. Jacob Chandi, and my guru, Dr. J.K. Abraham, they said this child will not live. Imagine somebody says you will not live. And they also said even if you somehow you make him live, he will be mentally, physically retarded, good for nothing. People must have told you also, good for nothing. What's the point? Why are you living? Why are you studying? Even your family, people would have criticized you. But God made everything and saw that it was good. And he made man and saw that it was very good. Tonight he is looking at you and saying very good. When you are looking at yourself and saying very bad. I am useless, good for nothing. He has taken a fisher man and made him into a man, an apostle. He is looking at you in a very unique fashion this night. He looked at this baby with a huge head, water inside, sent from CMC Velo, saying good for nothing. Now I operate such children. And last month I did the surgery. I put a tube in the brain and put it into the stomach. It's called ventricular peritoneal shunt surgery. Thank God that there was no surgery. If there was a surgery, some neurosurgeon would have operated my head. Shunt would get blocked, infection happens. Doctor dependent, hospital dependent, tube dependent, useless, miserable life. There was no surgery. Hospital closed their doors on me. Neurosurgery, which I practiced, said that I will not be living. But the God who created had different plans for me. Let me tell you, He has different plans for your life. He has a purpose in your life. He has a reason why He has brought you here for this camp. And He's going to speak to you in the next few days. He is going to give you visions and revelation. He is going to speak to you through the word of God. He is going to empower you with the Holy Spirit. You are going to have a close encounter with the creator. The creator of heaven and earth. Sun and moon and stars. He is going to meet with you in this camp. Like never before. And you are going to be transformed. And everybody said useless, good for nothing and send me home. My parents, they knew God. They had accepted Christ and they had come they wanted to do ministry because at that time when I was born God gave them a promise seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything shall be added unto you they started leaving the child with my grandmother and started going out preaching the word of God when they went out to the kingdom of God the kingdom of God came down for me Amen, Amen. Jesus healed me Hallelujah Hallelujah. hallelujah. Why should you say hallelujah because Jesus healed a hydrocephalic George Coburn and made him into neurosurgeon. If you say hallelujah, probably your miracle will be tomorrow morning. Hallelujah. 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 I see people who are paralyzed hands. So if your hand is still working, I would like your hand to go up this evening for one minute in the presence of God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Only one hand working, one hand. Two hands working, both hands. If your pens are there, please put it down. I want you to praise God for a minute from the bottom of your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you because you are our creator. You are our heavenly father. You are the one who gave your life for us. We want to thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why I shout hallelujah. And that's why I'm excited. All what I have is what God has given me. My life is a gift of God. My degree is a gift of God. My hospital is a gift of God. My family is a gift of God. Everything what I have learned and earned is a gift of God. And that is why I can...